Today I'm building a little video player timeline UI using Imba. I'm going to use Imba's newest hotkey feature and Imba's touch events with uh, touch modifiers. These are like really mind-blowing features. If you're used to using React or other libraries, I want you to check this out and uh, just see how cool Imba is. Um, if you don't know Imba, it's a replacement syntax for JavaScript. And for me, it's replaced JavaScript, CSS, HTML, and React. So to start out, I've got a very simple project here, which is a app tag that has a video tag inside of it and embeds a video. Now I'm going to add a timeline. So I'm going to create a tag here called timeline view, and I'm referencing a tag that I haven't created yet. This tag is going to accept a prop called video, and I'm going to pass to that a dollar sign video variable. So where does that come from? I need that to actually reference the video tag so that I can interact with it. And in Imba, there's an easy way to get a reference to a tag, which is to put dollar sign and then a name right after the name of the tag. So after this video tag, I'll write dollar sign video. And now when I pass that into the timeline view, it'll get a reference to the video tag. There is an HTML video API. So whenever you do have a reference to a video tag like that, you can call things on it like current time or duration, or is it paused and play it and pause it and all these kinds of things. So now I'm going to define the timeline tag. So I'll write tag timeline view. Every Imba tag starts with self as part of its HTML template. And I'm going to add some very basic CSS here. I'll, I'll write size, which is a shorthand for height and width, and give it a background color just so that I can see that it's showing up on the page. And there it is in the upper left-hand corner of the browser. Now I'm going to add a little bit of CSS to my app tag to position the timeline view tag below the video. Now inside the timeline view tag, I'm going to put div.track as the kind of background of the timeline. And so I'll put in my CSS here, dot track selector, background color, cool gray. I'm going to move the background color into here, position absolute, and I'll set top zero, left zero, width 100%, height 100%. So this is basically this track is going to fill its parent container. And that parent container will define the height 20 pixels, width 300 pixels, and now I've got a little bit of a track there. I'll put a border radius on it, RDXS for extra small border radius. That's all Imba shorthand. Um, and now below track, I'm gonna add another div with a class of playhead. So this div is gonna represent the playhead showing the current playback time. And I'll make a selector for that. Playhead, width four pixels, height. And for height, I'm gonna use the CSS calc function. And I'm gonna say 100% height plus four pixels. and then I'll do top negative two pixels. That'll bring it up slightly. And so it'll hang over the top and bottom. I'll also set left negative two pixels to make it more centered and position absolute. Of course I need in a background color. I'll use this rose five. Give this also a border radius. All right, now we can see the playhead and that looks how I want it. But when I play the video, of course, the playhead doesn't move because I haven't hooked up anything to cause it to move, but I want those to be synchronized. I want the playhead to move with the video. So what we're gonna do is add an inline style to the playhead where I'll set the X property. Again, this is shorthand that Imba provides you. That's a shorthand for the transform translate X property. And the value of this is going to be an interpolated value. That's what those curly brackets mean. It means I'm gonna put a variable in here rather than just hard coding in a number. And the variable is going to be called playhead position, but I haven't defined it yet. So we have to find a way to calculate playhead position, which is going to be the number of pixels from the left that represents the playback amount. So I want to do this little calculation within my render function. Now Imba implicitly puts um, a render function around your HTML template here, um, but I want to put that in explicitly. So I'm going to write def render, indent that stuff in, and now I can write some code here in my render function before the HTML template. So I'll define a variable called playhead position, and that's going to be equal to the current playback percent of the video, like what percent through the video we are, times the width of the track. So I'll say played percent times width. Now both of those variables also aren't defined, so I'm gonna to need to define those. So played percent I can define by saying video.current time divided by video.duration. Now remember, video is the video tag that we passed into this tag. And I actually forgot to declare that prop here in the tag, so I'll add that. And that's this video attribute that's getting passed in with a reference to the video tag. And 
there's an API for getting information from the video, uh, which I'm using. So video.currenttime, video.duration, those are the JavaScript video API. So the one other variable that's not defined here is width. I'm gonna make it so that you can pass a width into this tag as a prop. And I'll set a default value for that width, which is 300, which is the width I already set in my CSS. So I'll delete that out of the CSS. And I'll go down here on self and say, put an inline style width and then interpolate that width prop as the width here. So now that I know the width of the track, I can, and I know the percent playback, I can multiply those together. And that's the number of pixels from the left that the playhead should be positioned at. Okay, but when I play it, it still doesn't move. And that's because nothing tells this tag that the video has changed. It gets the video.current time when this tag first renders, but nothing tells it to re-render. In Imba, things re-render when there is an event that gets handled, generally. There is an event that I could use. There is a video, uh, I think it's video.onplay um, event that video tags can have. And, but it doesn't fire as frequently as I'd like. It fires, you know, like too slowly. And so the, the little playhead would be like kind of jumping um, across. I want it to move very smoothly. And a good way that I can do this in Imba is to use the special Imba prop called auto render. This is such a handy prop. You add this to any tag and it will cause that tag to auto render on a schedule that you give it. So if you put a value, it'll render every X milliseconds, whatever value you put that many, milliseconds, or you can put FPS as the units. And this is so cool because you can just write 60 FPS and now it will render this tag 60 frames per second. Now I always get really scared when I do this because 60 frames per second seems kind of aggressive to re-render this tag every 60, um, every 16 milliseconds, um, like you're gonna get some performance issue. But Imba always surprises me that whenever I throw something like this at it, I rarely run into any performance issue so I'll just go with it until it causes me a problem. Cool, so now when the video changes its position, the timeline view is re-rendering constantly. And so whatever the video position is, it's getting that and updating the playhead and looks like it's working nicely. The next thing I wanna be able to do though is to directly drag the playhead on the timeline or click different parts of the timeline and have it jump there. So. In Imba, there's a special event handler called the touch event handler that's gonna make this so easy. Like it's crazy how powerful this event handler is. You could make, you know, mouse down, mouse move, mouse up events and add all this logic to track, you know, that you're dragging and stuff. But this touch event handler kind of does it all for you. So I'm gonna put at touch and at is what Imba uses for event handlers. And I'm gonna say at touch equals and I'll put a little inline event handler here that just does console.log e.x. Now e is the event object. And usually you define an event handler, you have a parameter called e for the event object, but in these inline event handlers in Imba, it automatically provides the event object in a variable called e just for convenience. So this event handler logs the x value. There's a property of the event object called x, which is the x value of your cursor relative to the window. So you'll see as I click down and move my mouse, you'll see those values getting logged. And when I go to the left edge, it says zero. If I go beyond, it goes negative. When I go to the right edge, it's the value is closer to the width of the window. Now, what if I just took that value and set that as the current time of the video? So I'll say video.currenttime equals e.x. And now when I click and drag on the track where the event handler is, it's setting the playback time of the video to my mouse's position relative to the window, which means the left edge of the track is not zero. The left edge of the window is zero. And as I go right, it goes well beyond the length of the video. The video is about 40 something seconds long, but my window is much wider than 40 pixels. So um, this doesn't match up correctly. So we have to add an event handler that does all this logic to find the offset of the track and scale the values appropriately so that the left edge of the track is zero and the right edge is 40 whatever seconds, the duration of the video. It's gonna be a big headache. But of course, Imba has a solution for this. There's a concept in Imba called event modifiers and the touch event has a modifier called fit. And fit will basically do all the stuff I just said for you automatically. Let's just take a look at it. So I'll put touch.fit and this is accepts a few parameters. The first is the tag that you wanna to fit to. And so I'm gonna put self because I wanna to fit to this, this whole timeline tag. And what that means is it's gonna, it's gonna change it so that zero is now the left edge of 
this tag rather than the left edge of the window. So that's a good start. But the right edge is just going to be, well, it's going to be 300 because my, my timeline is 300 wide. But the video is not 300 seconds long. So when you go to the right edge, I want that to actually be 40 whatever seconds, the duration of the video, when you reach the right edge of the timeline. So the next two parameters allow you to set a start and end value that you want to kind of scale um, the values to. So I can set whatever I want for the left edge and whatever I want for the right edge. And of course I want zero on the left and 40 whatever seconds on the right, the duration of the video on the right. So all I have to do is put zero for the left and video dot duration for the right. And now it should be all synced up so that I can just set video dot current time equals E dot X and X has been modified using this fit modifier. Let's try it out. Cool. So now this works perfectly. You can click wherever you want, or you can drag along in the playhead. You can now set it and it will also update when you play the video. So cool. But there's one little interaction problem here. If I click down while the video is playing, and then I move around, it's going to move the playhead to wherever I put my mouse. But if I hold my mouse still, it kind of keeps playing out from under my mouse. And that's because the video is still playing as I'm dragging this around. And it's a little bit of a fight between where I'm assigning the video to, to be based on my uh, drag operation versus where the video wants to play to. So really what I should do is pause the video when this drag operation starts. So to do that, I will remove this inline event handler and replace it with an event handler called handle touch. Then I'll go up here and define that event handler, def handle touch. And I'll paste in that same logic that we had in the um, inline event handler, and it should work exactly the same. Cool, that works. But now what I'm gonna do is add a property to this tag called was paused. And I'm gonna use this to store whether or not the video was paused when I click down. You'll notice this variable has a pound sign in the beginning of it. I could do this with just a normal prop, but the pound sign makes this a protected variable that can't be assigned from outside the tag. You don't have to do this, but I don't want this value to be assigned from outside of this tag. So actually the touch event, event handler uh, fires when you touch down, when you move, and when your touch comes up. So I actually want to check that. And um, the event object, you can say e.type, and you can get the type of event it is, whether it's pointer down, pointer up, or pointer moved. So when the pointer goes down, I want to store a value in was paused. So I'll say if e.type equals pointer down, then say was paused equals video dot paused. And paused is a Boolean representing whether the video is paused. And on the next line, I'll say video dot pause. So this will actually pause the video. Now I don't really care if the video already was paused because this won't do anything. But in any case, when you touch down, the video needs to pause. And then we'll, I'll add another condition. If e.type equals pointer up, then video.play unless was paused. So only if the video was playing when I touch down, will it continue playing when I, when I touch up. And we can see that in action here. The video is playing. I click down. I drag. If I stop, it's not moving out from under my cursor. And then when I let go, it continues playing again. Great. All right, now let's add some keyboard shortcuts. This is another kind of tricky thing to add keyboard shortcuts, but there's a brand new Imba feature, which is a hotkey event that makes it super easy to add hotkeys. So anytime you want to have a keyboard shortcut, it's like effortless. This is based on a library called mousetrap.js. And so you can read their documentation for some details about how this works. But basically you put a hotkey event and then you give it a string representing the key that you want. So in this case, I want to do space and I'll put an inline event handler here where I say, if video.paused, then video.play, else video.pause. So spacebar will toggle the video playing and paused. So let me try that, hit space, hit space again. Cool, that works. And I'm gonna add a couple more hotkeys. This one will be uh, right. So you can actually just type right for the right arrow. And I want this to move forward just slightly in the video. So I'll say video.currentTime plus equals 0 0.5. And I'll duplicate that, do one for the left arrow, and this will be minus equals. So now when I'm playing the video, I can hit right, and it's going to jump forward just a little bit. And I can do the same thing going backwards. Now it would be really cool if I could have a version of this with um, shift plus right and shift plus 
plus left to jump at like a bigger increment back and forth. So I'll duplicate those uh, left and right ones and I'm gonna add shift plus right and shift plus left and I'll set these to 1.5. Now I think actually I should do 1.5 for the small increment and I'll do 2.5 for the big increment. Okay, so let me try with shift. There's a bigger jump. Cool. So let's add one last feature to our project here, which is going to be a little thing above the playhead that shows the current time that you can also drag from. So I'm going to add a div with a class of time inside of the playhead. And inside of there, I'm going to just print out video.currentTime. Um, and I'll put that inside of math.round. So this will show the rounded video time, the number of seconds. Now check out how easy it is to style this. Within the playhead class, I'm going to add a time class. And I'll just say with 30, height 20, background color rows 5, color white, font size extra small, display flex, JA center, which is a shorthand for align item center and justify content center, which will center the text in the middle of the box. Um, I'll do radius small, position absolute. Do top negative 25 to bring it just above the playhead and left um, 15 pixels which I can see is not quite centering it. So I'll do 13 pixels to account for the width of the playhead. And maybe 25 is a bit too high, so I'll lower that down a little bit. I'm gonna set cursor default on it just to make sure it doesn't change into a text cursor as I drag on it. There you go, works with my keyboard shortcuts, my drag events. I can drag from the new little indicator thing. Really cool UI. And it's just really impressive to me how quickly something like this can come together in Imba. So if you're curious about Imba, I encourage you to check it out. Go to imba.io. It's very easy to get started trying it out with the starter project. And I'll link to the docs in the description of this video. Now you may wonder why do I want to jump around the video in these tiny little increments? Because I'm using little videos in Chinese like this to practice studying Chinese. I used to work with a tutor where we would watch videos together and the tutor would help me to translate bits of the video and then I would rewind and listen to it again until I could um, comprehend what was being said. And this was really effective but very slow and tedious, especially trying to jump back to a specific position, especially when it's such a small, you know, one sentence of audio is, is pretty quick. Um, and I found it very difficult to navigate around the video. And so I thought I should have some software to make this more efficient. If, if I have to spend, you know, five seconds looking for the beginning of that sentence each time I listen to it, it's imagine being able to just instantly repeat it over and over and over versus spending five seconds each time you go back if you were to do like a hundred listens of the same sentence, you're gonna have so much wasted time. Um, and so it's just much more efficient if you have a custom video player like this. So if I'm watching something like this, I can quickly rewind, re-listen to the audio. And she said, Now I know ying is uh, like the kind of sound and she's saying it's poo poo kind of sound. I don't know what poo poo means. So what I, I've got this cool app called um, Text Sniper that lets you take a screenshot of some text on the screen and it will do OCR on it and give you the editable text. And it works even with Chinese. So I can copy this text here, paste it into a Chinese dictionary and we'll look up what poo poo means. And so it's an onomatopoeia that means, it just means the sound poo poo. Um, and so she's saying that when she hits the watermelon, if it makes a poo poo sound, I think that's like a overripe watermelon maybe. So it's really exciting to build some software that scratches your own itch. That's when you really feel like your computer is a bicycle for the mind.